Last night, the Carolina Hurricanes were finally able to find some offense in their win over the Winnipeg Jets. We will recap that game as well as hear from Yasmiri Kotkaniemi, Jack Drury, Brady Shea, and Rod Brindamore, all in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey there, Kaniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you are listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Hurricanes your first listen of this Wednesday afternoon. Don't forget to follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Hurricanes. Myself on Twitter at Jared Ellis underscore 96. And once again, this episode is brought to you by the lovely folks over at FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Now, as I mentioned, the Carolina Hurricanes were finally able to find some offense after going over eight periods without a goal with their previous goal being within the first three minutes of their one nothing shutout against the Philadelphia Flyers. So it was a long time coming for the Hurricanes to find some offense. And thankfully, they were able to do just that last night against the Winnipeg Jets, netting five goals, two of which came from Yesmiri Kotkaniemi, who I said, but now with Andrei Svechkov being out for the remainder of the season in playoffs, he's going to have to, along with pretty much everyone else on the roster. They're all going to really have to step up because that is a massive, massive hole that Andre is leaving. And they did so last night. And that was really Really big again, yes. Spirit Coat Yummy netting two goals, I believe that surpassed his season high. We'll double check on that later in the episode. Jack Drury getting called up on Monday, then slotting in last night, and then netting what would have become the game winning goal off a beautiful setup from his Chicago Wolves teammate from last year, Steph Nazan. Brady Shea as well. We need guys stepping up top to bottom and that's what they did last night and that's how the hurricanes are going to obviously win games like that but also win games heading down the stretch into the playoffs that's going to be really really big but getting into that game yes Barry Cook and Brady Shea both had multi-point games last night with Brady Shea having two goals uh he had one in at the end of the second period and then the empty netter at the very end of the game, Brady Shea netting the Hurricanes second goal of their yes, second goal of the night. And then also having an assist on yes, Spiri's uh, first goal. So big nights from both of them. And yes, Spiri, he is really, really on a tear as of late. He's hitting his stride here in this uh in this back half of the season and i think he's really found his groove here as the hurricane second line center and that is really big he was early on in the season i mean i know i was critical of him but i was giving him some leeway uh more so than some other people were cuz i understood that hey you know it's it's got to learn how to be a second line center that's a big role for him and I said, you know, whenever he came in that, you know, he's going to have some ground to make up in terms of his development. And he's really hitting a stride right now. I'm really proud of him. And this is what, yes, Spirit Coach Yemi had to say following last night's win over the Winnipeg Jets. The game's haven't gone really out of way the last, last couple before this one and tough news uh, this morning. So, uh, you know, it was just a good to get a win. Just uh, feel like the get the little calm down, you know. I think big win for the sweaty team. Um, you know, it's a big piece, piece in our team, and uh, you know, 
uh, we're going to miss you for sure. Good to work your way through some adversity within the game, too. That kind of weird play where Martinuk gets taken out and they let, they let play go on. Yeah, uh, I mean, that was a pretty interesting one. Um, you know, uh, I don't know what I can say here, but <laughs> 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 I might just stay quiet on that one. But, uh, yeah, you know, didn't get the call that we're all way in that one. But, uh, you know, still a couple of good goals and uh, get, get us going. And, uh, you know, hell of a job from Freddie. Another high-scoring game from you, but it seemed like a big key was that you guys got matched up with the Winnipeg's top line. You guys pretty much shut them down. Kind of. How yeah. did you feel about kind of getting that assignment to take on the top guys on the other side? Uh, I just feel when we're on top of our game, we can play every line in the league. You know, like I said before, we get a lot of skill in our line, a lot of speed. Uh, just hard to play against us when now uh, we're right on. Is that your quickest wraparound in your career? How quick you, you curl that around the net? Uh, it's probably the first one. Uh, I started to the puck in the corner after that, but happily went to the net. How good did it feel to see Jacob's first goal go in, especially after uh, going scoreless in the last two games? Yeah, it was nice to get that early on. You know, we've been struggling with scoring a little bit lately, so, you know, I think that got us going for sure. You had a slow start to the season, but now you have set a new career high in goals. Kind of how do you feel like your kind of game has come along offensively for you this year? Uh, I think all, all, everything starts from defense. You know, you need to get pucked out of your zone, zone as fast as you can, and just uh, you know, offense is the best defense. I feel you know, if you keep the puck, it's other team will have to score. You were you were throwing some hits too. You were throwing your body around. Yeah, freaking Nino was coming after me. I had to go. Back. <laughs> that was. <laughs> was, that, was that what was that? So, again, yes, Beer Kokiemi setting a new career high in goals now with 14 on the year. And I'm here looking at the Carolina Hurricanes' uh, remaining schedule. And I'm wondering, you know, can he hit 20 goals on the year? Um, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 games remaining in the season. I do think it is possible for Yesbury to set a to hit that 20 goal mark, especially now with Sveshnikov being out to the remainder of the year. He's going to have to step it up, as is everyone else, but he's really finding his groove. And I, I think Yesperi can hit that 20 goal mark. There is again, he's at 14 now. I really do think that it's possible for him to hit that 20 goal mark. And if he does, I, I'm already proud of him. Yeah, he's he's come a long way. He's really coming into his own. And I think yeah, he's just going to continue to get better. And he's going to be a real bright spot for the Hurricanes. They signed him to that long term extension for a reason. So obviously they see a lot in him. And, you know, he mentioned, you know, that hit on Jordan Martinuk. And that was very frustrating, I think, for everyone in the building, at home watching, uh, listening on the radio, whatever. Because that was a really, that was an obvious hit that should have been called and play should have been stopped. And then it led to a goal for Winnipeg. And I just there's always going to be missed calls regardless of the sport, whether it is hockey, football, basketball, whatever, there's always going to be missed calls and there's always going to be obvious ones. And it was just one of those where it was, this one was so obvious. It's very frustrating. And, you know, I know I it said, you know, uh, a few days ago, you know, with that, a uh, bogus goaltender interference not uh getting caught or whatever it was that i do feel that that should be reviewed but yeah you know, something like this i mean it's just like come on it, it's common sense yeah you know, that it should have been play should have been stopped right there but it is what it is with that one uh and it's not something we can harp on for too long because that's one that all right, it was a missed call. It was a blatant one at that. And sadly, that's never going to change. I, I'm sure there's going to be more of those for the rest of the Hurricanes. What was it, 16 games uh, in the regular season? I'm sure we're going to see it in the playoffs. We'll see it next season. We're going to see it in a 
Charlotte Hornets game. We're going to see it in the NCAA tournament. We're we're going to see it regardless of the sport. And but I do still stand by that there needs to be reviews on the cold center interference stuff. But one thing that I was again, I was really proud of Yespiri in this game, but I was also really proud of Jack Drury. You know, he gets called up on Monday. It's his first NHL game of the season. And he nets what would end up being the game winner. And you figure he could very well be here for the remainder of the regular season and into the playoffs. Okay. And yeah, I really think that that is a strong possibility for the Hurricanes. They seem to like to have an extra an extra guy uh, at this stage, you know, whether it be, you know, for forwards and defensemen, because we also have an extra defenseman right now. Uh, and we'll actually end up having two, you know, now that I think about it, because uh, you have Dylan Coglin there, uh, even though, you know, he slotted in last night. But I really think Jack is going to be an extra guy and think he's going to be a mainstay on the Hurricanes roster for the remainder of the year and into the playoffs. And, you know, I was really proud to see him go out there and have a really good game and look like he looked like he belonged. It wasn't it, he didn't look like a guy that you know, got called up to fill a roster spot and just blended into the background there for the Hurricanes. It wasn't like that. I mean, you see that, you know, time after time, you know, we've seen it with the Hurricanes in years past and you've seen it with teams across the league of, you know, a guy gets called up, you know, basically to fill a roster spot and just blends in, you know, but that wasn't the case with Jack. Yeah. He's, he's going to be a mainstay of the Hurricanes roster before too long. I'm really confident in saying that. I think he's really talented and we did get to hear from him last night as well. And this is what he had to say following last night's game where he got the game winning goal. Probably didn't think it'd take this long to, to get another one after uh, getting two quick ones last year, but how good does that feel when you first came back? Yeah, it feels good. Uh, hockey's a funny game. Comes in, comes in waves sometimes, but that was a great pass by Steph there. And uh, it's nice to get one. Is tough situation to come into right now obviously a lot of adversity things are you know with the switch going out and everything what was the feel when you came here and i'm assuming this team is still committed to doing what what their goal is at the end of the year definitely i think first off you know uh i feel awful for svetch he's such a hard worker and he's just such a great guy and uh since i got drafted with him he's been so good to me so it's tough, tough for him, um, but I think as a team, everyone knows that we've got to step up and uh, can't let it bring us down, and it was a good start today. The start of the season, I don't think went as good as you wanted it to up here, but when you went down to Chicago, what was kind of the message from the team kind of before you kind of came back up here? Uh, just work hard. I think uh, the play down there, we've been playing a lot better lately, uh, so it was good to, good to work on my game and uh, stay fresh. Mason played with him last year, obviously had a big year in the AHL. He's a, he's a glue guy, I think we can all agree that that's the kind of role he plays. Uh, how big is that just to see him step up after that hit and keep, you know, things could have gone sideways there when they score off that kind of weird no whistle and, and all that. Yeah, it takes a lot of guts. I think uh, the team responded well with uh, Shazie's goal right away. And then Nace, uh, you know, he's a tough guy and s stepped up when the team needed it. So a lot of respect for that, and uh, it's good for him. All right, thanks, Jack. Yeah, so Jack being another guy, yeah, really stepping up. And I'm really excited to see what he can do the remainder of this season and in the playoffs. And as I said, I want to see, I'm excited to see what he does the remainder of, you know, his career. I am, I say that, you know, like he's going to be retired in like three years, but no, the kid has a very long future ahead of him. And he's, He's going to be on an, the NHL roster sooner rather than later. I'm confident in saying that. He's he's really good, and I'm excited to see what he does the rest of the season. And that next of the season starts on Friday against Toronto. And, guys, you know, if you're wanting to place a bet on that game, folks, make sure you're doing at 
FanDuel Sportsbook. And if you're not, you know, wanting to bet on a hockey game, you can bet on a basketball game as well because the midway point of the NBA season is here. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. And you you can probably bet on when Jack Drury scores his next NHL goal. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlay. You can bet on a Jack Drury goal and a Yes Beard Coke Yummy goal. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That is fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fanduel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Now, folks, one thing that I really I knew was a thing, but I didn't realize just how good the Hurricanes blue line has been in terms of offense, because not only is the Hurricanes leading the league in scoring first now 42 times this season, the Hurricanes uh, blue line group uh, defenseman, excuse me, I my brain totally melted there, has scored a league high 44 goals. That's something I do feel has flown under the radar some, honestly. And, you know, myself included, you know, it's, again, one of those things that I didn't really, I knew they were up there, but I didn't realize that they're now leading the league in that uh, category. And I'm really happy about that. To be honest, because in years past, it's feel it's felt like that's been one area where they've like you know they've had like yeah you know, the one one or two guys, but you know as a whole, that's kind of been it. You know, a lot of guys just blending into the background. And again, I know defensemen. Yeah, you know, it's not their job to score offense. Yeah, you know, it's not their job to rack up a bunch of points and whatnot. But you know, it helps. It really helps. Uh, but you know, you're looking, you know, I just pulled up the Hurricanes um, uh, stat sheet, excuse me, and we're going to look at, you know, just where everyone is stacking up. Brent Burns, 12 goals. He's also got 51 points on the season, uh, absolutely killing it. And then we have Brady Shea, 13 goals. Uh, then after that, you got Brett Pesci at four. You got Jacob Slavin at six. You got Jalen Chatfield at five, which I was surprised. I didn't realize he had that many. Calvin DeHaan at two. Shane Gostaspare at two. And Dylan Coughlin at zero. So, yeah, you know, the Hurricanes, Blue Line, they're, they're chipping in. And, you know, again, Burns, you know, 51 points. He has 39 assists. I, I remember correctly, he's... Yeah, he's leading the team in assists. So and that is great for the Hurricanes there in that regard. And Burns is doing exactly what they wanted him to do is be an offensive force. And he's already almost at his point total from last year, which, if I remember correctly, was 50 four points last year and i believe that was the case yeah 54 points uh last year he's almost there this year and he's absolutely killing it absolutely freaking killing it and as is the whole of the hurricanes defensive core there and yeah as i said already this episode Something that the Hurricanes are really going to need to do. They did it well in this Winnipeg game. Play a full team game. And you know, the defensemen chipping in offensively, that's big. That's a really big part of that. And as I said at the top of the episode, Brady Shea having a two-point night goal and assist. Everyone's chipping in. And again, yes, Spirit Coat and Yemi, two goals, Jack Jury. Uh, game winning goal, Brady Shea goal and assist. That's really, really big. And that's going to be big for the Hurricanes. I want that 
to continue. I want that to continue into the next game for the Hurricanes against Toronto on Friday, then Philly, and then the Rangers games. And yet we need to keep seeing this. Again, is it going to happen every game? No, I'm not that naive to think that, you know, we're going to have, you know, Jack Drew, you know, scoring goals all the time. You know, I, I know that's not going to happen. I know there's, we're going to lose some games, you know, down this stretch. I know that. I know there's not, there's going to be some not great games, but you look at what they're able to do whenever, whenever everyone's chipping in. I've said it all season long when top to bottom, they got guys chipping in and the power play is operating the way it should. This is a scary, scary team, even without Andre. If Andre was there. Oh, God help that other team. Uh, Toronto's up next. If Svetch was there and they were operating like that, good luck. But, you know, we did get to hear from Brady Shea last night as well, following that game against the Winnipeg Jets, where he had a goal and assist. Again, really enjoying Brady Shea this season. He's another guy that's kind of flying under the radar with just how good he has been. And this is what he had to say last night after the Hurricanes win. Brady, can you just talk about the response to the Martinick hit? You know, taking that hit, and you guys jumped right back, back on him after that. Yeah, that was huge. I mean, great job by, by Nace there. Um, you know, it takes, uh, takes a lot of courage to step up like that. And, uh, you know, obviously got the bench going and, and the guys going. And for us to, you know, capitalize right after that was definitely a turning point in the game. A lot of adversity this week. A lot of adversity in the game with that particular play. How do you like the reaction of the guys? You know, it, it could things could go sideways here. And it seems like you, you all are still on, on the right track. Here. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, I mean, the news about Svetch is, is really tough. You, you don't replace a guy like that. But, um, you know, everyone has to step up now and you know, do a little bit more. And not to, not to change their game, but just, you know, give a little extra. And, um, you know, it's and then today the with Nace, like I said, is just a great job. The team rallied together. And we're going to have to keep doing that uh, going forward the rest of the year. You guys pretty much erased Winnipeg's top line throughout the entire game. Is there anything going into it you guys kind of isolated on, or is just kind of how the game kind of goes sometimes? Yeah, uh, obviously you just got to kind of know who you're on the ice with. Uh, when you're with those those top lines, you got to be a little aware of, of speed and skill, and um, you know just try to do your job, try to stay on top of them, and give them as le- as least small time and space as you can. So um, I thought we did a great job of that tonight, and uh, hope we keep, that, keep doing that moving forward. How important was it for you guys to get that first goal, goal early on, especially you know after going scoreless in the past two games? Yeah, it was it was big. I mean, uh, obviously we were a little snake bit there for a couple of games, and um, you know we knew that wasn't going to last too long. So uh, nice to get one early, and then um, I think we ended with five. So that was that was a good game by us. Did you guys, as a decor, knew you kind of had to step up and kind of help the forwards a little bit? <laughs> no, no. I mean, we're we're there when we can. Uh, you know, we try to chip it on the offense as, as much as possible, and um, the coaching staff here allows us to do that. To do that, so um, always nice when a couple of D men can score. Nice to see Jack jump back in the lineup and contribute right away. Really good, yeah. He was. I thought he was really good tonight, and then uh, obviously to cap it off with the goal, that was that was a big goal at that at that point in the game. So um, a great job by him and um, the rest of the guys. Had to be a relief to see Martin come back on the ice so quick. Yeah, it was. I it looked. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't look great. Definitely. Uh, and um, yeah, obviously he's a really tough guy, and uh, to see him back out there, not too long after that was uh, was a good sign for us. All right, thanks. Shane. So again, Brady Shea. Uh, a lot of guys weren't happy about that Martin Hook hit. Um, really, no one was. And one thing I did forget to mention earlier with that is Steph Nason. He took matters into his own hands and he dropped the gloves there with uh, Stamberg uh, over that hit. And yeah, and he definitely won that fight. And there was a big ovation for it as well. And I was talking about how the 
defensive core has, is stepping up and helping out offensively. Jacob Slavin also netting the Hurricanes' first goal in nearly in over eight periods of hockey. So that was really big for the Hurricanes. I think whenever they were able to do that, I think that gave them a lot of momentum. They're like, all right, we got this monkey off our bat. We finally were able to score a goal. We went a very long time without it, but we got it. And then they were able to just get to doing their thing. Because I know if it was me out there, given these guys are professional athletes, it's their job, they know how to handle stuff better than you or I, it would get to me. It would really get to me, you know, getting shut out in back-to-back -back games. Having scored a goal in, again, eight periods of hockey, nearly nine, because, again, that first goal in that game against the Flyers came within the first three minutes of the game. So that would get to me, and that would get under my skin. So, And that's something I've I said many times. I think yeah, the mental aspect of the game of guys getting in their own heads does go overlooked sometimes, but they got that monkey off the bat. They're able to get to their game, and that was big for the Hurricanes. And Rod Brandmore also spoke with the media following last night's game as well. And we did get to hear from Rod Brandmore again, as I just said. And we will hear what Rod had to say following last night's game right after this quick break, folks. Now, one thing I'm trying to do is take care of myself a bit better and eat healthier, get in the gym more and just overall live a healthier life and a great thing to help out with that is of course built bar and i know a lot of you guys that have been around for a long time you guys know all about built bar but if you're new you're going to be asking yourself what makes built bar so good well first off they're covered in 100 real chocolate that's right real chocolate no like artificial fake chocolate real chocolate 100 and they come in a whole whole host of flavors like churro my personal favorite peanut butter brownie coconut almond and many many more and if you're wanting them right now you can go to walmart get a box you can go to sam's club get a box and great thing about built bars is that they are only 130 calories with four grams of sugar and 17 grams of protein and like i said you don't have to wait around you can go to walmart right now to get a box or sam's club walmart you can get a four bar box of cookies and cream double chocolate or coconut pops i'd probably go with the double chocolate it's a pretty darn good flavor in my opinion or if you got a sam's club membership i was there this morning and i saw these there but thankfully i'm stocked up so i didn't need to get any more you can get a 13 bar box of brownie batter and churro and if i remember correctly there was also a bonus bar in there of some double chocolate but it would depend on which location you go to and if none of those flavors stick you fancy you can go to built.com and check out they're a long, long list of other flavors that they have. So make sure you go check out Built Bar today, folks. Now, again, we did get to hear from Rod Brindamore following last night's game as well. And this is what Rod had to say last night following that much, much needed win against the Winnipeg Jets. I seem like the team did a nice job answering go their goals uh, to extend the lead twice to tie the game. I mean, that's a that's a, a nice sign for breaking out of a because of scoring slump. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, he probably had the last three games. That's probably the least amount of scoring chances we had in any of them. And then you score four or whatever five, and everyone's so you know, it's probably our worst game too out of all of them. But that's how it goes sometimes. Um, I, I like that we when we got ahead. Obviously, and like you said, answered. Um, the, their first goal is just, you know, there's a, everyone stopped playing, and all of a sudden, you, like, that shouldn't happen. But um, overall, I, I mean, I'll take the two points, I guess, the best way to put it. How encouraged are you? There's adversity these last couple of days. Yeah. Adversity, like you mentioned, on the play with Mark in the game, the way your guys responded. Well, that's the whole key to everything, it's how you respond. I mean, that's life, right? <laughs> how you respond to the stuff that doesn't go your way. And, like I said, it wasn't a great game. We didn't play great, but um, yeah, I, I mean, we responded, and that's kind of to your point. 
when you saw Martin having to be held to the locker room, I'm sure you were thinking some words you can't repeat, but right. what relief was it for him? No, it was nice to see him come back, that's for sure. Um, you know, it's kind of a double whammy, right? Because it goes down, and then they go down, and we just kind of stop playing, and it's in your net. It's just like, oh, man. You know, but at least he, he came back, and you know, hopefully he's okay. We'll find out probably a little more here today or tomorrow. Good game from Jack Durham. Yeah, listen, contributed. Contribute. Contribute. And that's, it was a great play by Nazer uh, to get in there and, um, and create the, the pass to him that he finished. And, you know, that's what we need. We need. Like we talked about it earlier, everybody's got to contribute. It seems like everybody did in the game. You know, Boss not going to buck away from the goal. Burns on the slide. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, like, we had a few. Uh, Martin come on him, coming on the back check on one. Like I said, we, 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 we weren't great tonight, but sometimes you don't have to be. And just you have that little extra effort here and there, and we got a couple bounces, which we hadn't gotten in three games. And that's how what happens. Mason, the definition of like the glue guy, the, the way he played tonight. I asked the standing up for Martin up. You know, I know you're not, you're not a huge fan of that yeah. stuff, but. Yeah. Well, I'm a huge fan of standing up for each other. It's just, you know, I don't like seeing that so much. Just somebody might get hurt. But it's, I, I, I uh, when we, we talked about him. Um, he's, he definitely is, is impactful and does his job. And, you know, it's been a great addition. The Cook and Yemi line got the Winnipeg's top line matchup kind of pretty much shut him down the entire day. Usually we'd see the stall line kind of go against them. What was the philosophy kind of going to the game to match them up? Uh, I don't really want to get into it too much, but I think it was, uh, you know, that's they have three good lines, <laughs> so you got to pick your poison somewhere. And um, you know, we've we, KK has done that, that in, in other games too, and I just felt like the, the matchups the way they were that was the best way to go. How encouraging is that to see him anchor a line that does that against guys like that? Well, yeah, listen, it only gets tougher. And, you know, obviously, like, we're shorthanded here a little bit up front. So other guys have to really – it's not they have to be that much better. You just – you got to be really good, all, everyone. And different situations are going to come that they hadn't necessarily been playing all year, like you said. And now we have to thrust guys into there because we have all these kind of openings. Ryan, I'm sure you addressed, addressed this this morning, but can, can, you, can you speak on the loss of Sebastian Yeah. You know, what it means to this team and how you expect – it's devastating, to be quite honest, because everyone loves the guy so much, and it's we, you still you see him. He, he's in the room after the game, and you know he's cheering his buddies on, and you know you hate it for him. And it's uh, you know as you would any of the guys that are out and patch ready too. But obviously we got a long history with Fesh, and um, we know how hard he works, and and how much he means to the group. So it's 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 a tough one. Do you, do you think he further aggravated the injury by playing? No, I'm not. I wouldn't. I have no idea on that. I don't think so. I just think he's such a strong man. And he could kind of muscle through it. How do you expect the team to respond overall? You know what I mean for the rest of the season. You probably expect well, I know. I know how we're going to respond. We're going to play our hardest, and you know we're going to do our best to like tonight. We just kind of piece it together, and who, everyone has to step up. Our D were good. They scored some goals for us. Um, you know. At the end of the day, I say we weren't great, but we didn't give up 23 shots, right? Like, that's pretty impressive, so against a real good team. So that, that's that's pretty much how we're going to have to do it. Is Shazy shot kind of a, a hidden gem that a lot of people don't talk about? He's got a really good wrist shot, right? Like, he's scored, and he's, I mean, the guy's an offensive threat because he can skate. And uh, you add the two little weapons there, like skating and good shot, and he's a smart player. Um, that's why he's having the year he's having. Thanks, Rod. Yeah, Thanks, Rod. Guys. Have a good night. <coughs> so, again, you kind of hear Rod you know, speaking on the importance of Andrei Sveshnikov and then you know, how Brady Shea has been this year. Again, I feel you know, he's a guy that has really flown under the radar this year and actually. One thing before we wrap things up, uh, in terms of Jordan Martinuk, again, you know, Rod said, you know, you know, he doesn't really know, or at least at that time, didn't know if yeah, you know, he possibly reaggravated anything. But I just saw that Jordan Martinuk, who was Andre's replacement for the final Canes corner at Backyard Bistro of the season, that's been canceled for tonight because it said the Hurricanes just said. Jordan Martinuk is feeling under the weather. Given that could very well be the case. I would 
pollen is getting bad here in Raleigh. So that very well could be the case. Or, you know, that knee could be, you know, pretty darn sore today. So I'm not going to, you know, put on tinfoil hat about it and say that that's why it got canceled. But it's not something I would rule out, you know, if he is just extremely sore uh, from that hit. You never know. But that's just something we're we're just going to have to wait and see on that. And, you know, if he does have to sit out the game against Toronto, you know the Hurricanes have that next man up mentality. That's what they're doing right now with Svet being out, Pacioretty being out, Ronza being out, Kasha being out, Gardner being out. I mean, there's just, you know, a whole host of guys that either haven't suited up this season, haven't suited up in a long time, or are done for the season. The Hurricanes will step up and get the job done. So make sure you are also stepping up and getting the job done and following the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Hurricanes, myself on Twitter at Jared Ellis underscore 96, and subscribe to the show on YouTube. And I will talk to you guys in the next episode. And as always, let's go Canes.